on your marks, get set, go. Um, Interacting was established in 2006 to develop the potential and capabilities of disabled people through participation in theatre. Our first show at Glen Eden Playhouse was a rip-off of Pirates of the Caribbean, and it was called Captain Cutlass and the Pirate Girls. It involved a cast of 20, a 15-page script, and was played to a capacity audience of friends and family. We wanted to create an ensemble theatre of people with disability that could stand alongside mainstream theatre companies in terms of innovation, high professional standards, and entertainment. We'd seen the work of Back to Back in Australia, and uh, we were very inspired by them. They're a, um, a highly respected, established ensemble of disabled actors. We wanted to tell the stories of people seldom heard, be surprising and defy expectations, to make a unique contribution to the cultural and creative life of the community. We wanted to use the very public nature of theatre to make people more visible and to upend the notion of disabled people being the passive observers of art into the creators and purveyors of idiosyncratic, powerful theatre. We ran drop-in classes throughout Auckland, trawling for talent and people passionate about performing. And from these groups, we assembled a cast who went on to perform the Deadly House Party at Glen Eden Playhouse. Again, it was a scripted show with original music. It had a huge cast, a revolve stage that featured three different sets and hired costumes. It was hugely challenging. Performers had to learn lines, remember cues, wear unfamiliar costumes, navigate a set, and handle props with a plomb. And we pulled it off. However, we didn't think it played enough to people's strengths. How to translate all the quirkiness and the life and exuberance of our performers onto the stage? And while using a wordy script saved time and gave structure, it had the unwelcome effect of making some actors stilted and reducing talented non-verbal performers to being bit players. When we began to work with Iris Health, the question became, how do we enable performers in wheelchairs and who cannot speak to tell their stories? Their answer was to use multimedia and technology. The World in Focus premiered at Mal Theatre in 2008 and used a sophisticated AV, original music, and for the first time, flying dance in the telling of stories. For the audience, this was an insight into the lives of people they had never seen before. The show was hauntingly beautiful, and the seamless way the stories were told enabled audience engagement. The performer's artwork was incorporated into the narrative to produce a living, breathing, multi-dimensional play. Meanwhile, we were working with an ensemble of seven adults with learning disabilities to create Into the Naughty Corner, a collection of stories about people's experiences of growing up different. The stories were of school and marriage, work and loving classic cars, Moving from humor to pathos to shock, it gave a powerful insight into people's lives. Out of these stories, a strong theme began to emerge, and this was the fear of institutionalization. None of our actors directly experienced the big institutions like King's Seat and Carrington, but all of them had been threatened by these when they were children. We began to incorporate that theme into the aesthetic of the show. We realized we'd come a long way from Captain Cutlass and the Pirate Girls. A second show with Iris entitled Journeys used personal stories to create a powerful and shocking narrative and with the theme emerging of early abandonment. To original song and flying with the support of a young non-disabled dancer, Shannon told the story of being adopted as, as a small baby with all the questions of, why was I a secret? Why were you so ashamed? Almost half the cast had been adopted as babies, with two men spending their entire childhood in the Wilson home. Meanwhile, our thriving drama group had been meeting in Henderson and created My Heads in a World out of their love of Shakespeare and Romeo and Juliet in particular. A reviewer wrote, This performance will show you Shakespeare in all its aspects, comedic, tragic, traditional, and yet timeless. But the real joy of watching interacting theatre is the complete delight of every single performer. It beams from the stage and can't help but draw you in. Inspired by the Awakenings Festival in Australia and disability arts festivals in the UK, we decided the time was right to stage a disability arts festival. We wanted to showcase all the creative work that was happening and give it recognition. 
and to provide an opportunity to see what other people were doing and look at ways to collaborate. Interact 2011 was conceived as a fringe festival in that all performers were welcome, from those who were enjoying their first time on stage in front of an appreciative audience to professional performances from Touch Compass and Chris Talley Evans, the storyteller from Wales. There was a huge response from special schools who came in droves, and there were over 500 people at the first day at Corbin's. The festival program covered a broad range of more than 150 disabled artists, providing music, dance, theater, storytelling, and visual arts. Janet McAllister, writing in The Herald, said, in an art context, being disabled can mean lacking access to others' art and lacking the opportunity to create art and undergo professional training. But being disabled clearly does not mean lacking the ability to make art and change perceptions. Those in the mainstream who avoid disability art are handicapping their own art appreciation. In the process of organizing the festival, we made contact with many more community organizations and art projects, plus individuals and families. People called and contacted the website to ask how they could be involved in the work of interacting. So last year, we began to run drama and filmmaking workshops weekly from Nathan Homestead, Tapak, and Fab on the North Shore, while continuing to run classes from Corbin's. With most of these classes at full capacity, we need to look at how we can cater for higher numbers. We want to maintain these three strands that interacting has developed, creating unique theater, running performing arts classes in the community, and staging a disability arts festival every year. Thank you. <laughs>